Hi once again. Welcome to episode 791. And today we're going to talk about authenticity. What it is, what it'll cost you, and why it's worth it. So before I jump in, let me introduce myself and give you a little view. I um, know <laughs> the word for it. And then we'll jump right in. So first of all, let's say hi. Let us say hi. Let me say hi. My name is Barry Selby. I'm getting myself together, I promise. Um, I am a best, I'm the best-selling author of a book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, an inspirational speaker and relationship um, and love expert, helping women create balance and love life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is, informs my work and inspires these talks I've done every day now for over two years, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're episode 791. As I said, a lot of talks I've done so far the last two years. And the topic today is about being authentic. And the question actually is, can you be authentic? And are you ready and willing to give up? Sorry, are you ready and willing to pay the price to be authentic? And I'll get to that later on. I'll leave you a little suspense at the beginning. So let me start with what I'm, why I'm talking about this and what this is about. I'm realizing that I may shortcut some things along the way as I'm saying this. So first of all, this is actually a continuation in a way of a talk I had yesterday afternoon with a friend of mine. Um, if you haven't seen, if you didn't see, it's actually on my wall now because she shared it out publicly. Um, it's the second time she and I have met up to do Facebook Live together. And yes, it was about authenticity and she'd worked with people on, with on-camera talent and I work with people in a relationship and some of the stuff overlaps very nicely. So yesterday we talked about authenticity and I want to do my own spin on it today. So, um, so pr- hats off and props to my friend Sarah who brought the topic in the first place yesterday in our talk and this is now my solo chat about it. So being authentic is often spoken of in like kind of lip service. People talk about being authentic, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm real, I'm, I'm fine. It's like, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean authentic that way. What I really mean about authenticity is right to the core. Being authentic for me is stripping away all of those overt, blatant lies that we speak and oftentimes doing away with the lies we tell ourselves. See, part of being authentic is not about necessarily being seen by the world. It's about being seen by seeing yourself in the mirror, honestly, authentically, and truthfully. Of course, authentic. Yeah, I did authentic twice. (laughs) I'm reviewing what I'm saying, what I said as I'm saying it. And this is the thing about being authentic. It is a no apologies stance, a no apologies place to be. And for other people, it's not a comfortable place to be at all. It's much easier to play safe and fit in because being authentic tends to have you stand out from the crowd. So that's one of the prices you pay, by the way, you won't be invisible anymore. Being authentic requires you owning your space and owning your, um, I want to say raison d'etre, but it's not, not, not really, reason, well, it is your reason for being, so raison d'etre, yes, but it's really your, your calling that brings you into the world. Now, most of us, didn't get a little note tied to our ankle when we were born that showed us why the reason why we're in the world. So let me speak to that for a minute, or in a moment. I believe everybody on the planet who's been here, who's yet to be here, and who's here right now, has a unique expression, purpose, mission, calling to be here. Some of it small, some of it large, some of it overt, some of it discreet, all of it useful. It's hard to do that if you're not being authentic, because in a way, being authentic is the doorway to get clear about who you are and why you're here and what you're up to, which is a powerful place to be. And for many people, they'd rather fit into and conform to society and make do with what is, rather than actually own up to their authentic nature. And one of those things happens in particular in jobs, that thing called employment and careers. A um, couple of recent experience, a couple of recent conversations I had with people really stirred this up for me in a lot of little ways. Particularly about employment, where um, a friend of a friend um, who is on um, workers' comp, which is a whole other shena- um, um, shenanigan scenario in the business world, and basically she has to go back to work the day after she has her first doctor's appointment. Because the way workers' comp is set up is not designed to help people heal, it's just a mandatory gift that's given when you injure yourself on the job, basically. But it's not focused on the individual's support and true needs, ultimately. There's a piece missing there. I'm not going to get into the politics of that, I'm just saying it's part of the problem. Another piece 
is how um, I have friends of mine, I went through it myself, with companies where they downsize and suddenly you're out of a job with no benefit, no strategy, and you go start looking for an hour on the job. And for a lot of people, they can taught themselves to fit into that new environment, that new job. They, they don't want to create any ripples, they don't want to disturb the peace because they know if they get screwed up in that job, they're out of it and then they don't have a job anymore. And that's one of the places people can form and hide away from their authentic nature a little bit too much. Frankly, I'd rather be, have a team that works with me. Interesting, I didn't plan on saying that. Okay, <laughs> apparently I'm going to be building a team. That where everybody in the team is authentic, is real, is is transparent, is basically, I was going to say emotionally naked, but I mean really to be transparent, to be seen and not hiding anything. Because being authentic is about basically coming out of hiding in large cases. Most people in the world, not you of course, just people you might know or cross paths with, are walking around in such a um, shuttered, contained experience that they're hiding out from the world. They're hiding their gifts, they're hiding their joy, they're hiding their power, they're hiding authority, they're hiding so much of themselves because they're afraid, either they're afraid of being authentic or they just don't know how to be, get there. And I'll get to that in a minute too, I hope. <laughs> no scripts is what makes this interesting. So one of the pieces of this is being authentic is what will help you live your life fully. So it's a big plus there. Also when you're being authentic, it's almost the same as being truly honest. When you're authentic, there's nothing to remember to pretend you're not doing or to hide from stuff. So when you really are owning your authentic nature and being fully expressed, then you're actually owning up to your true nature. Your God-given talents, if it's so to speak, your authentic expression of power, authority, gifts, love, service, care, all these different things. But so many people are afraid of that because they're afraid perhaps of being ridiculed. I know I was when I was younger, thanks to being bullied at high school, but it might be something else too. And the recognition that when you're actually able to express yourself fully, when you're able to be free with that, then the shackles come off. Then you really get how, in, in, um, what's the word looking for? What's the name? Impeccable, it's not like quite the word. But you're owning your gifts and talents in the world, it's such a powerful place to be. And for that, I'm deeply um, inspired by other people who do that. And when I look in the mirror, when I remember to do it myself, it also helps as well. So I'm always remembering this as well. So let me just speak some of the prices you pay for being authentic. First of all, as I said before, you come out of hiding. So there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to pretend to be. You can't sort of hide in the crowd because you're going to be seen, which for some people is the scariest thing on the planet. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> I've been there. Secondly, one of the pieces of being authentic is that it's harder to pretend to fit in with other people which is a little different because there's sometimes there's groups of people you want to be part of, but authentically you can't, you have to walk away. And some the price you pay sometimes is some of those connections and maybe social um, communities that you think you belong to. But the truth is when you're authentic, you'll know if you do or not. And maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you're authentic and they don't accept you, then you're going to be paying a price because you'll have to give up something to be part of that group. The other part about being authentic which is really where it comes back to being a positive, is that you start to know yourself so powerfully that you start to tap into your true nature, your gifts, your talents, and your skills, which requires you to respond to them. It requires you to step into that truth. It requires you to be a vessel for the power, the truth, and the nature of who you are. I know I'm getting a bit spiritual here, but that's kind of what's coming through. Part of being authentic, from my belief, is you type into your inner truth, which is generally is connected to spirit, to God, whatever you call that yourself. Now, for some people who are very religious, you might be externalizing that and having challenges with that, which is why it can be challenging to face this conversation, because I'm speaking about owning your God-given talents, but also owning your God-given nature that is who you are. There, I went spiritual on you. The recognition for me is when you start to become authentic, first of all, you start to recognize other people being authentic because it's easy to spot. Because <laughs> like you, they're no longer hiding in the crowd. But secondly, life gets a lot easier when you start getting used to it. It's kind of like, well, I was going to say it's kind of like riding, riding a, bicy a bicycle with training wheels, but it doesn't quite fit the analogy, so I won't use that one. It's the sense of freedom you have when you don't have to restrain yourself anymore. The thing is, I was saying before about when you're honest, one of the best gifts about being honest, there's no lies to keep track of. 
which is much easier. You can just be real, be transparent. And the authentic nature of who you are is that gift. You get to express yourself and show yourself in the world. And the thing is, if people don't like it, it's not really something you concern yourself with because you are free to be yourself. You're actually connected, fully connected, to your true nature. And when you are authentic, then the desire to get other people's approval diminishes because the approval seeking is not authentic. The appreciation of other people liking you, that's certainly fine. But when you're attached to other people liking you, that's another indication that you're not being authentic. Authenticity is a place where you can stand on your own two feet, open your heart, and beam your light into the world, and it doesn't matter what other people think. And it's not to scare people, although it might, but also it's not to affront people. It's meant to be authentic. And if people like it, great. If they don't like it, great. You become neutral on that response because you're not here, if you're living authentically, to really gain approval. The challenge can be, I'm speaking personally here, I guess I am, is being visible in social media and being on, you know, being on YouTube or on Facebook, whatever it is, and being seen, and then you compare the numbers of likes, that can be a bit of a, stroke, a, a blow to the ego. Or is that just me? Maybe it's just me. But being authentic requires not being attached to that, <laughs> which I'm still working on. And recognizing that when I'm sharing my message like I am here, if I get three people watching it who get value from it versus a thousand people who like it, I'd rather go with three that get value from it. I'm letting that one sink in for a second. Because that's the thing. For me, in my work, with being the work I'm doing, delivering, the teaching I'm giving, the sharing I'm bringing, I'm so invested in being a messenger of truth, of light, of love. And if, I, if one person benefits from it, awesome. If nobody benefits from it, that's the other part, by the way. Again, this is where it's stretching me beyond my comfort zone, certainly, is being authentic means if nobody likes what I say, that's fine too, because it's not up to me to consider what people like. It's for me to speak my truth. And that's another part of being authentic, is it's aligning to an inner truth and alignment to your true expression that doesn't require other people's input, approval, or acceptance. However, let me say this part, though. When you do live authentically, express authentically, and you've known people who've done this, musicians, artists, speakers, leaders, social change creators, those sort of people, anybody who does live authentically, one, you'll recognize them, and two, you'll appreciate what they bring. Because authentic expression is a gift to the world. Most people who don't like it are actually in a place where they're in fear because of their own authentic nature being, being tickled, 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 maybe tickled, and certainly triggered by your authentic expression. So consider this one of those interesting things is when you're vibrating at your, your light, so to speak, or you're sharing your gifts as an authentic nature, you start rattling other people's cages. Those cages, by the way, they lock themselves in. They weren't locked by anybody else. So what you're doing is reminding people or inviting people to step out of those cages to, to re reclaim and own their own authentic nature so their gifts can be shared in the world too. I like to think in a way that being authentic is contagious. That would certainly make it easier. And so my message here is an invitation to you is can you express your authentic nature more fully than you've done so far if you haven't already done so? And if you haven't come out of your self-imposed cage, come on out. It's kind of nice out here. Now, of course, I did warn you with some of the negatives that'll happen, so maybe you've got to think twice about it. But I suspect, I believe that when you do step out, you'll find that the benefits, the joy, the freedom of coming, being in your authentic nature far outweighs any feelings of loss or lack that may have happened before. I trust this in myself. It's one of my, my own um, more conscious, more comfortable, and more committed paths that I take. And I invite you to join me, to be authentic, to express your truth, to live your true nature in the world, which is challenging also because it's so tempting to maybe swing left or right in in way things are swinging in the, in the country or take sides in the country. The challenge of being authentic is sometimes you can't take sides. Or so, excuse me, when you're authentic, you won't take sides. Some of the challenge of being authentic is that sometimes you've got to walk through that valley, walk in between the forces amassed on the left and the right and be willing to walk through those and be fearless. That's the next level of living authentically. I know I get swayed, so I'm, I know this part I'm still working on because I'm not perfect at this by any means. 
but I'm committed to becoming more open, more available, more expressive of, of, of authenticity in the world, in my life, in my work. Whew. I think that'd be my message for the day. <laughs> I haven't seen people, I've seen people popping in, but I haven't seen any responses, so I trust there's value here. People are listening and getting value from it. Again, it's out of my control. It's not what I'm focused on, really. But I know that there's value in this conversation. So if there's questions or thoughts you have about this topic, please put them below and let me know you, you've got some value or your questions, or you're not sure about it, or you want to argue about it, that's fine too. Um, I think that's about it. Do you have anything to say about that? I think that's authentic. Yeah, I think that's, my, that's pretty much my message. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. If you haven't seen me before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. Um, which is right here, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays you can find on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and also on my YouTube channel for safekeeping. My YouTube channel is uh, Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Um, links in the comments. I'll put links. I will put a couple of links in the comments because part of the journey to, to really becoming authentic is learning how to love yourself. I know I'm passionate about this. I've said it many times. You've probably heard it me say it so many times. Self-love is one of the biggest keys to freedom I know of. So that's going to be in the comments, the link to my self-love practice, because I know it will help. And I'll put a link in the comments for my book, because I did mention that earlier. And also, if you're looking for more support in the area of love and relationships yourself, and you're stuck, particularly with the ladies, I'll put a link in the comments so you can reach out for a free chat. That's the three things that will be in the comments. You know where to find my replays. Um, and you can comment and share this one out if you want as well. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. And uh, who knows what the topic will be? What's some ideas already brewing about tomorrow's topic? I saw I read an article today that gave me some grist for the mill. So thanks for watching. Live authentically. Own your truth. Speak your truth. Be out in the world in a way that benefits others. And most of all, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.